Xenia is one of the easiest emulators to install on PC. It doesn't require system files and boasts a very nice looking graphical user interface. But there are a few things you need to be aware of during setup, so let's get started. First of, you won't download the emulator. Instead, you'll download something called the Xenia Manager. Don't worry, this is exactly what you want, and you'll see why. Once you have it downloaded, you can install it anywhere you like, but for the purpose of demonstration, I'll install it on my Windows desktop. I'll create a folder and just call it Xenia Manager. After that, installing the emulator is a simple matter of dragging the contents inside. To finish installation, start the application to let it create important files. Now you'll get three options from a menu. You can install all three of them, and I recommend that you do so. We'll start with the stable build. You'll notice that the menu is gone now, but that's not a problem. Just click on the settings button and select Open Xenia Installer. Now proceed to download Xenia Canary and Xenia Netplay. I'm assuming that Netplay is for multiplayer, so if you want, I'll have a look at it in a future video. When that's done, we can change the theme of Xenia Manager. I prefer the dark theme because it reduces the glare from my screen. But again, you can decide for yourself. Now it's time to add our games to the home screen and it's a simple matter of pointing Xenia Manager to the correct folder where you have your games. I have my folder here on the Windows desktop, so I'll just drag it inside Xenia Manager. As far as I know, games can only be added one at a time, and there is a good reason for it. But first, let's discuss the two primary formats that games are available in. The first is the XEX format, and these are always in a folder, as you can see here. The second are standard image files, like these ones. They are about 7 gigabytes in size. We'll start with Forza 2. It's really easy, so just follow my example. Canary is almost always better than Stable Xenia, so choose that one. The games just work better that way. After that, just click on the name and wait for the game's cover to appear on the home screen. Now let's install one of the games in the image file format. I select Crackdown 2. Again, Canary should always be chosen because it's just better than stable. Alright, I've installed more games into my library. But before we can play them, I will need to change their settings first. However, instead of changing settings for the whole emulator, we must do it on a per game basis. So let's say we want to play Red Dead Redemption, we must choose its profile from the drop-down menu. Now we can start changing settings. Usually you don't have to worry about audio, so we can skip that. Under Display Settings, you can increase the resolution up to 1080p. Normally games tend to have graphical issues when upscaled on the emulator, but Red Dead is fine at 1080p. And it's not that demanding either, unless you have a very old PC without a discrete graphics card. Under NVIDIA settings, make sure that VSync is forced on. I'm not sure about computers with AMD cards. Under graphical settings, select DX12 as your renderer. The emulator was designed with DirectX in mind, so that should always be your default choice. Resolution scale works different from simple upscaling, but the result is the same. It's not recommended to use it yet. As for anti-aliasing, I like FXAA Extreme. The image just looks a lot cleaner. For sharpening, I prefer Fidelity FX. It's just a personal preference. For mount cache, you can leave it on or off, but just know that some Forza games require this to be enabled. Okay, so when we're done, we can save the settings and return to the home screen. But before we can play, we first need to enable patches for Red Dead. Right-click on the game's profile and select Add Game Patch from the drop-down menu. Just click on No. I have the Game of the Year edition of Red Dead Redemption, so I'll just select this one. Now when you right-click on the profile, you'll see the patch settings. Let's have a look then. 
let's focus on the important ones. You can unlock the frame rate if you want, but that's up to you. Bear in mind that increasing the frame rate will be more demanding. Disabling depth of field and motion blur may streamline performance a little bit, but I usually disable it because I don't like those effects. Since I enabled anti-aliasing, it would be prudent to raise anisotropic filtering as well. In Red Dead Redemption, sun rays are visible through walls, so disabling sun flare fixes that issue. Okay, so we're basically done. The only thing I would like to add is that you can change the designated version of Xenia when playing a game. Here's how to do it. Right-click on the profile and select Edit Game. From there, you can switch Red Dead to Xenia Stable if you want. It's not recommended, but if games are giving you trouble, switching to Xenia Stable might work in rare cases. Just remember that you'll have to reconfigure settings for the game. That covers all the important bits, I think. If you found this guide useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.